fascinating. I want to turn to the question, though, of um, of the social impact of, of AI, because that's what we're here to, uh, to discuss. Um, and so, Lisa, let me start with you, because you drew this distinction between doing what's best for uh, the consumer um, as opposed to doing something nefarious with their data. Talk a little bit more about that and how Pinterest navigates that um, that 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 line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're very um, very strict about that at Pinterest. So I think that guides all of our decisions in this area. Uh, I could I can talk about uh, a really interesting way we're using uh, machine learning to make a positive difference in people's lives. Uh, one of the uh, products we launched uh, about a year ago is Inclusive Beauty. So it's a skin tone search feature that uses machine vision to sort pins, that's our content, uh, in, in the site's beauty category by skin tone. So the user triggers us initially because we've given them the option to refine their searches by, based on skin tone. So once they do that, we learn from them that this is what they're interested in and we're able to serve up an experience and content for them that's more in line with what they're looking for. Uh, and it, it's um, something that we developed to make the Pinterest experience better for the user and it's ended up really helping our growth. Okay, Merle, what about at, at City? Um, so I know you think about social impact and particularly uh, how you can use AI to uh, help communities that are underbanked, for example. So talk to us a little bit more about that. How do you think about using AI and marketing to, to, uh, you know, to have a so positive social impact? Thank you, Al. Um, so there's really two dimensions to that. Number one is being able to tap into uh, wider range of data in addition to the traditional credit reports to understand customer behavior and to understand customer risk at deeper levels and in more dynamic ways than ever before. Historically, as you know, uh, banks have relied on credit reports and they're valuable to a certain point, uh, but, but are limiting in the sense that they can be a little bit uh, static and they're also very retrospective and you've got a vast uh, underbanked uh, population. Here in the US, we've invested in a, in a startup named Perch, and our intent there is uh, to find a gateway into using a, a wider range of data, such as your cell phone behavior patterns or your cell phone payment patterns and things of that nature to understand uh, your credit risk and uh, your credit worthiness at a deeper level than one might be able to tap into using traditional uh, credit variables uh, from, from the bureaus. Uh, the other piece of the opportunity that I see is uh, being able to uh, influence outcomes. So to engage with customers, prospective and current customers to preempt uh, adverse situations. For example, going back to the, uh, to the instance of being able to stitch together data across channels, uh, our intent is uh, to be able to find patterns around customer uh, payments, such as uh, do they pay their utility bill at a certain time of the month, and, and to be able to know whether they've got enough of a balance in that month in their account to be able to avoid uh, a, an insufficient fund uh, situation. So uh, really sort of thinking about the customer needs in more proactive ways at a deeper level and engaging with customers in ways that preempts the likelihood of adverse outcomes. And the third dimension is uh, using a much broader range of data to be able to predict uh, customer uh, credit worthiness. So it sounds like when you talk about targeted marketing, you're, you're really targeting right down to the individual, his or her uh, actions or behavior, and then trying to mesh that with the financial circumstances they're in to, to help them avoid a bad outcome or achieve a better outcome. Sanjog Mishra, let me come back to you because I know you've done work with uh, nonprofits, helping them to uh, deploy AI uh, to improve their uh, marketing and their, their uh, efforts generally. T tell us about some of the work you've done and what you've learned. Uh, so one, one project that I worked on um, was with the SNAP program. This is the food stamp uh, uh, program. And it turns out, for example, even during the pandemic, uh, people who are eligible and have qualified for SNAP. So what happens is that at a six-month, um, you know, uh, there's a trigger 
where you have to refile kind of a form, a simple two-page form that that makes sure that you're you're continually eligible for benefits. And if you don't fill out that form, you lose your your food stamp benefits, right? Uh, and you'll be you know I was shocked to learn that about 80% of people who come up for you know for that recertification as it's called just fail to fill out the form and then they lose their benefits, right? So. And, and you know you could think of this as essentially a churn problem, right? Like in, from a marketing point of view. Uh, so what we did was we we ran an experiment, um, and we learned used deep learning to kind of learn what elements of a message resonate with a particular participant, right? So the goal was to try and get them or remind them. So in the in the uh, in the class of kind of interventions that my colleague here, Dick Taylor, would call a nudge. So it's not, we're not changing their incentives, we're not changing anything else, we're just algorithmically creating nudges that are personalized with language that resonates with the participant. And we managed to get like a 30% bump in the recertification rates just by sending them timed reminders which told them to come out and fill out the form, right? So I think this, this massive avenue for using uh, AI and targeted marketing in the public goods sector uh, and that's the success of that campaign has kind of led us. Uh, so my partner is this organization called Code for America that tries to help governmental agencies digitize strategies. And so now we're thinking of using it for earned income tax credits or any other place where we might be able to take large amounts of data that are already available, you know, layer on this targeted marketing AI layer, and then just you know uh, try and get. You know more good done than uh, than otherwise would have happened.